So, next up is Michael, who is going to talk about monitoring Kubernetes using Prometheus. Hello, everyone. Um, as Carl already said, I, will, I want to show you now one possible way to monitor Kubernetes uh, with Prometheus and OMB Labs Edition. Kubernetes and Prometheus, uh, you probably heard of already. Um, you get to know what, what OMD Labs Edition is in a couple of minutes during the talk. Uh, first, let me introduce me. Um, I'm Michael. I'm doing monitoring now for about 12 years, mainly using Plano and Nagios, as we learned today in the morning, uh, this kind of old-fashioned Nagios. <laughs> but it still works some way, sometimes. Um, but one focus is open source monitoring. I do only open source monitoring uh, with the uh, current tool set. I'm a senior monitoring consultant at Munich based console. Um, just to drop the logo here. They pay my expenses today. <laughs> and now for the real thing. Um, to the background. Um, I'm I'm an Agios guy, what should I do with Kubernetes monitoring? Obviously, Nagios doesn't work in such an environment. But uh, our DevOps team at Console uh, had the chance to implement a proof of concept of a Kubernetes environment uh, at a customer. Uh, to be more precise, uh, it is an open shift environment, but from a monitoring point of view, it's quite comparable at some unknown Munich car manufacturer. So it was a quite nice chance for us. Um, and we have already monitoring instances there running. Um, so it was obvious that we should try to monitor Kubernetes there, but we did not have any clue about how to do that, especially with Nagios, no way to do it. So here is where Prometheus comes in. Um, Prometheus seems to be a natural choice when doing Kubernetes monitoring. Um, it has an integrated service discovery for Kubernetes. Um, and it, as another example, it retains labels between Kubernetes and Prometheus. For example, when you define a label or an annotation, and in, a, and in a Kubernetes definition, um, you have good chance to have it retained in your Kubernetes and your Prometheus metrics. And another reason why using Prometheus is there are a, a lot of resources, um, tutorials, blog posts available on the net, for example, uh, Brian's robot, robust perception blog or Fabian's ProOS blog, and there are tons of examples uh, on GitHub where you can browse through. So, I want to uh, start with the actual implementation we tried. The first building block. Um, of this implementation is, as already told, the Prometheus Integrated Service Discovery of Kubernetes. A very simplified configuration would look like this um, in your scrape targets definition within Prometheus. Basically, in my demo environment, um, I use the Prometheus Kubernetes YAML example directly from Prometheus GitHub account. Just uh, left some parts out which are not necessary for the demo. So basically, this is like that. In this diagram, this is a Kubernetes cluster uh, running with some cluster nodes. There is a Prometheus instance deployed within. And this instance talks to the Kubernetes API and gets some metrics, for example, uh, from C Advisor or from the API itself. For example, uh, Garda metrics contain AP service status, container CPU statuses, 
kubelet, add etcd statuses, and so on. This is the first part of this implementation. The second part uh, is the node exporter. We already heard about node exporter. Um, Carl's talk, I think, yeah. Um, this is um, an exporter from Prometheus uh, itself to export hardware and OS metrics, um, for example, provided by the kernel. In our Kubernetes uh, development here, this node exporter is deployed as a daemon set. As a daemon set, it runs per default in every cluster node available. So if uh, someone decides to add another cluster node, it will get automatically started there. And with this annotation, Prometheus scrape true, it will get automatically, uh, Prometheus will automatically find this new node exporter. So when adding new cluster nodes, uh, new cluster instances, uh, no one would have to change some, something in the configuration. It would simply appear in Prometheus. So it looks like that. Here are the node exporter instances as demons that started are the nodes, and the running Prometheus discovers these and scrapes its metrics. This gets us, provides us with a lot of additional metrics, for example, CPU metrics, disk, file system, and so on from the uh, separate cluster nodes. One third component uh, is cube state matrix. Uh, it's a project I found uh, on Kubernetes itself. Uh, this one is focused on the health of um, AP, not the API or the C advisor metrics that uh, Prometheus already scrapes. Um, it exposes metrics, for, ex uh, for example, deployment, health, uh, node health, pod health, um, all of these internals of a, a Kubernetes or OpenShift deployment. Here as well, I set the, uh, the annotation screen true so that, it's get, that it gets discovered automatically. This is the diagram for that component. It's deployed as a, a pod uh, as well and gets automatically discovered. Here you see again some of the metrics that are now exposed from this. So now we have three um, types uh, of ingestion. So Kubernetes service discovery itself, the node exporters for the um, node metrics of the cluster nodes, <coughs> and the cube state metrics. Uh, in a little demo environment here, I can show you these metrics. Uh, this demo environment is based on Minikube. It's a sub-project of Kubernetes for running a sample of Kubernetes on your laptop. The sample config uh, you can get on my GitHub account. Uh, links and presentation slides, uh, by the way, uh, you'll find on the uh, FOSDEM schedule um, event page for my talk here when you need it. So, try it out. So I have here a mini cube running. <coughs> Status, for example, yeah. It is running. I have already opened the dashboard where you see um, I have Two deployments, cube state metrics, Prometheus as a deployment, daemon set for the node exporters, and here in Minikube there is only one cluster node. Therefore, for the pods, I have only one running node exporter pod, and one pod for the cube state metrics, and one pod for Prometheus itself. So let's have a look at Prometheus. So 
this is uh, the Prometheus instance running on Kubernetes on the Minikube demo environment right now. As you see, it already ingest, ingests a lot of metrics of this running Minikube. To be honest, I don't know what to do with uh, this bunch of metrics, but the um, operations team of Kubernetes probably will know what to do with it. I'm fine with providing these metrics <laughs> for someone else to know what to do with it. So the list is pretty, pretty large. So you'll see here from the targets configuration, I have the scrape targets, Kubernetes AP servers, nodes, Kubernetes pods, service endpoints, and Prometheus itself. As already said, uh, this configuration is basically the same as available as an example on the Prometheus GitHub account. So if trying that out or using my list of services, uh, a second, you get uh, some deployment files for your Kubernetes 01 to 07. This is uh, on my GitHub account. You get three example dashboards, the JSON files for Grafana, and later then the definition uh, for the OMD. For example, in the Prometheus config map is included the configuration for running Prometheus inside after model after the official, semi-official examples. So now we have a PowerPoint list. Yeah. Now we have a Prometheus running, ingesting metrics. But um, we are at a point um, where I don't know what to do with it now. Because yeah. we would need um, many other components to have a running monitoring system and a useful monitoring system. We would need persistent storage. Uh, for the time series database, for example, or for uh, the configuration files when needed, we would have a uh, separate instance of an alert manager with its configurations. Obviously, we would need Grafana. Um, maybe we would need a push gateway separately on the instance. This would look like that in a Kubernetes environment. So deploying all that inside the Kubernetes, I thought <coughs> that's not my kind of stuff. As well, we already have that. We already have uh, many of these components here in our classical OMD Labs Edition monitoring. Um, the OMD Labs Edition is basically monitoring in one package. Um, OMD stands for Open Source Monitoring Distribution, but distribution is kind of misleading. It's not a separate Linux distribution, for example. It's a platform where we bundle stuff uh, that has proven useful uh, for us consultants to get a monitoring up and running in almost no time with a customer. Uh, one big point is, of course, it's completely open source. It's based upon uh, the experiences around Nagios monitoring. As Nagios is in this package as well as Asinga or Asinga 2 or Neiman, a separate monitoring course. Uh, all the forks are available. It bundles, as already said, best practices of many years of consulting experience. So we simply wanted to do the same stuff over and over again at a customer. You don't need no root access um, to run the monitoring site. Uh, you only need you need it for installation of that monitoring package, and it's the muster lösung, the sample solution at this uh, Munich car manufacturer for monitoring projects there. 
The OMD Labs edition, as the name implies, is uh, developed by Console Labs. Console Labs, uh, you may have noticed it, uh, is a platform from console employees that do open source stuff in, in their work and their part time. So, uh, but we are already free for other contributions who want to work with us, who want to do something great. And OMD is not only the, uh, the only project here, um, for example, Citrus or Sarkoli for end-to-end -end testing is another project. Uh, there's Fabian stuff, for example, is already as well available on OMD Labs. But it's not that OMD is only a single package for monitoring that would be okay for a, f a fixed starting point. It has already as well one super nice feature, I, I think. The, uh, ah, sorry for that. You see what we here include. It's a small uh, part of what we ship with together with, with OMD. You may recognize. I think uh, Thruck as an alternative user interface, InfluxDB, as well as Prometheus and Grafana is also built in there. And also some monitoring plugins, proven useful, and also we shipping also Ansible because we regularly need it to uh, do some monitoring tasks. So we decided to put it into one package um, to minimize configuration needed. And here's the other feature, the killer feature, I think, the sites. The site uh, from an OMD uh, is a separate monitoring instance that runs off, off the same binaries on the file system. Basically, you do an OMD create my site and have a um, environment where you can set, for example, your monitoring core to Nagios or to Isinga or to Neiman. You can enable Prometheus or Grafana per instance. You can also copy, for example, the prod instance to stage um, when you want to test larger changes in your monitoring or if you want to do money, uh, version upgrades of OMD. You can deploy several versions of OMD in parallel on your server and can selectively upgrade every uh, site to a spe specific version. So, for example, you could do an OMD, co OMD copy prod to stage, update this new site, test if all of your monitoring stuff still works, and if it does, you could set this one, or the move stage production, it's also one uh, command, and disable or delete the old production environment. So you're quite safe when doing upgrades, when doing tests, uh, and as already said, you have a um, possibility to run different configurations on one machine or different custom installations. For example, customer one, customer two, and they are separated completely, so uh, you don't have to care about if customer one sees uh, monitoring information of customer two. More information about uh, OMD Labs Edition you find on labs.console.de slash OMD. So, back to the implementation. When setting up OMD, we already have Prometheus there. So we could scrape the Prometheus Kubernetes metrics from the OMD. I've decided not to do so. Why? It's quite hard to access pods inside Kubernetes. Um, this, uh, the SDN 
makes it quite hard to um, access some non-privileged port as I found out. And it's also hard to access the API from outside Kubernetes. This is uh, especially true for OpenShift. Um, there you have to uh, be a cluster admin and a cluster admin role to access the API and exposing that from outside uh, with TLS uh, certificates and tokens is quite complicated to get this information outside. So I decided to use federation for that purpose. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I will come to that later. <laughs> so federation basically exposes uh, the metrics from the inside Prometheus um, and with a regex matching an outside Prometheus can scrape these metrics. I thought this is a great idea <laughs> um, to get something like that running. We have this Kubernetes environment with the inner Prometheus and the outer Prometheus in the UMD environment federating all Kubernetes metrics from the inside to the outside. I found it worked. <laughs> so we can see here. <laughs> For that I start. An OMD environment. So my OMD is now running. So someone will kind of have a flashback. It's a little bit um, more modern interface for Nagios, but um, it should be very familiar. So in, in this example, I have some uh, monitored hosts with Nagios uh, measurements, for example, and then I can access the OMD Prometheus, and here I have running the Kubernetes Federation and the metrics of the inner Prometheus. Uh, two, federa uh, two scrape targets set up, they are running straight up, and they are delivering metrics. So you should see the same huge list of metrics in the outside, Prometheus. There we are with Prometheus. We are also have Grafana here. Um, no, that one. Grafana. This has access to the OMD Prometheus. For example, I have added a node dashboard. Um, which I got from grafana.net, um, which shows you the metrics and health state of the cluster node, the node exporter, gathered metrics, system load, memory, disk usage. Another dashboard here is uh, the Kubernetes dashboard, which shows uh, the running pods, and the CPU usage, you, you see Prometheus is quite high here, but I, I found out it, it still works. <laughs> Memory usage, network I.O. And I bundled as well an extended dashboard where more metrics are provided, for example, system service. So this is M21. Container CPU usage, for example. These three dashboards are also available on the uh, GitHub repository with the demo data for you to play with. So at first glance, this looks nice. 
Um, we have a Prometheus, we have data in there, we have a Prometheus running inside Kubernetes where we don't have to care much about it's simply deployed, it's simply running, there's no storage there. We have an outside Prometheus running within the OMD side which gathers, gathers its metrics via federation and at first glance it looks like everything is working. Um, but there are some issues. Yeah, two weeks ago I read a blog post by Brian <laughs> who told me, no, this is not the purpose of federation. One should do aggregation and uh, minimize data when doing aggregation, federation. Um, for example, or putting only relevant metrics out of an um, other instance of Prometheus, um, pulling all that metrics could, uh, could cause, for example, race conditions or something like that. But I decided to try it anyway. It runs for a couple of months, to be honest, in our proof of concept, as well as in our internal testing environment. And I did not notice any problems. So. Yes. <laughs> Let's see that. Another issue uh, we're facing, uh, especially at this customer, um, the inner Prometheus is now open to be accessed by everyone. Uh, this is not allowed in production in a, in a proof of concept. We can do this but not in the production environment. So uh, I still have to figure out how to secure um, this inner Prometheus and be still able to get metrics out of it. So this is an open point. I have, I had, uh, I have not looked into it up to now, but uh, we, are, we know we cannot go live with this issue. Another issue, um, Combining the traditional OMD and Prometheus is, yeah, should Nagus alert, should alert manager alert when we mix them? Um, how do we, how do we uh, get rid of an overhead of configuration? So when, when using Nagus, should we root through alert manager or the other way around, should we gather metrics through Prometheus and create Nagus alerts out of it? So this is kind of uh, uh, an open task too. As we learned, open uh, long-term storage uh, for Prometheus is in the making. I think um, Julius works on InfluxDB exporting. I think I read something about it. I don't know. Um, I thought it. I don't know. So um, our customer wants long-term storage for at least some of its metrics. We could um, try to do it with federation of aggregated metrics. Um, therefore, the customer needs to know uh, what he wants to store for a long time. But that could be a viable way using uh, federation here for one long-term storage Prometheus for the time being until another solution exists. <coughs> and the last issue with it is the, uh, the coverage. In our internal environment, our DevOps team um, <coughs> had, had a severe outage uh, last week, yeah. And Simply no pods, no deployments worked, nothing worked anymore. And uh, they did, did not see anything until um, the Kubernetes cluster was running up and running again because all the internal Prometheus was down. No metrics were delivered. So they decided they wanted to uh, additionally have an external monitoring of Karusha concepts components. For example, moving out 
the node exporter uh, from inside Kubernetes to the machine itself or monitoring machine health traditionally using Nagios. We have not, not yet decided what to do. They also wanted to have important services like etcd monitored as well as some main a API queries um, that indicate the overall health state of a, Kub a Kubernetes cluster. This is uh, the main point, uh, which uh, is from the lessons learned here. You, I think you'll need some kind of external monitoring. The, um, the approach to have an inside Prometheus and gathering data there is nice for the customers, for example, of your Kubernetes environment, uh, where they need to know what their deployments do, uh, if their services are running cor uh, correctly. But uh, from the point of view, from the operations side, from the Kubernetes cluster, I think uh, the, the approach of an inner Prometheus is not really sufficient. You need an external monitoring as well. Be it Prometheus, be it traditional Nagios, that doesn't matter here for us. OMD consi uh, uh, consists of all of, of these components, so it doesn't matter really. So, thanks for watching. <laughs>so this system is running right now as a proof of concept still this is running as a proof of concept and uh, in our internal testing environment, yes. It's mm -hmm. nothing yet deployed in production. And your external uh, Prometheus server is just one server right now. You're running on one external Prometheus server. Yes. Um, our OMD environment um, runs normally at most of our customers uh, on a virtual machine. This is the fact here also. The OMD runs fine on, on VMware or something like that. Next question. Yeah. Uh, why do we need uh, two Prometheus instances? Uh, one that is inside the Kubernetes node and another one inside OMD. Why can't we just have the Kubernetes uh, Prometheus instance Feed so, data directly to Grafana. Sorry, I, I, I'm just suffering from problems with uh, Why not just this inside? Okay. Hmm? Which slide? Inside. So, why not just have the inside Prometheus is the question. This one. Yeah, you could do this as well, but you have the problems, uh, the same problems um, when your Kubernetes cluster doesn't uh, work reliably anymore, you won't see any metrics, you won't have any uh, monitoring in, in, in the worst case. So, um, of course it's possible to deploy Grafana on the load manager in here. Um, I think it's the most, uh, most, uh, the most covered way to do that. But this problem is not gone even if you have two instances of Prometheus, right? One outside as well. Still your problem is not gone. If Kubernetes is down, you still have the same problem. Yeah. So the question is why we need another one if your same set of problems are still existent? Thanks. This external runs separately. So if this cluster dies, um, you lose uh, the metrics provided from this one, but you still will have those one uh, that could scrape directly the cluster nodes or monitor crucial components from the from the Nagios.
So if you lose everything inside the Kubernetes, in the best case, it doesn't matter. Next question. Going once, going twice. Thank you very much.